Hey, Joel here from M2C1, and in today's video I will be showing you how I made this bedside table. I always like to start off with a rough sketch to figure out the dimensions, and beforehand I took careful measurements to make sure my alarm clock wouldn't be too high or too low relative to the bed. Now for this table I wanted a single drawer with an open area underneath, but in this sketch for some reason I didn't draw the drawer? Draw the drawer? Draw the drawer? Anyway, moving on. I pick out an old pine board from my dad's offcut pile to use for the frame. Then I take some initial measurements to make sure I have enough material to work with. And this board does have a slight cup to it, so using the table saw I ripped it down the middle to minimize the amount of planing needed. Then after some quick passes on the joiner, I run each board through the planer to ensure a nice flat surface. And back on the table saw to do the final rip cuts for each piece of the frame. Now it's not always necessary to have a cut list, but when there's a lot of similar pieces it does help to keep track of what's what. Once all the pieces of the frame are cut to length, I can get started on the half laps. And for that I'm using my crosscut sled. Off camera I set the blade to exactly half the thickness of the frame pieces. Then I set stop blocks for the start and end cuts. The stop blocks allow me to repeat the cuts for all the pieces that will use the same cut pattern. After that, it's just a matter of removing the rest of the material from the middle. And once all the pieces have been cut, I can begin the glue up. Working on one section at a time, I make sure there is full glue coverage on each joint. Then I apply even clamping pressure on all the joints. I let that cure for a few hours, and then I repeat the process for the other section. Next I join the face sections using the side cross member pieces. and again with the clamps. Alright, while this glue is curing, I can get started on the panels that will sit in the various openings of the frame. For this I'm using walnut, and again I'm going through the usual wood preparation process. First measuring to make sure I have enough material. Next I make some rough cuts on the miter saw. Then I plane one side flat. And these boards have some pretty rough edges, so I needed to even up one side on the bandsaw before running it through the joiner.
Once I have a clean edge, I can trim up the opposite edge on table saw. Then I resaw the slabs into thinner panels. To do this, I make some incremental cuts on the table saw. And then once it's close enough, I can simply pry the halves apart. Then a few more quick passes through the planer will smooth out the rough spots. I'll need a few different sizes for the side panels. The panels that will go into the top portion of the table can be trimmed up to fit. However, the panels that go in the bottom portion need to be joined up to make a larger panel. For this, I am simply just adding some glue, clamping it up, and ensuring that the piece is flat. Then using the crosscut sled again, I cut the panels down to final size. and then I give each panel a quick sanding to remove any dried glue. Switching back to the frame, I give it a quick sand with 150 grit. And then I set up the router with an eighth inch roundover bit. I give the four outside edges a round over and clean it up with a quick hand sanding. And then for the faces, or recesses, or insets, whatever you want to call them, I am using a 532nd Roman OG bit. And once the dust settles, I'll use a sanding block to break the edges on the legs. Then I did a quick dry fit with the walnut panels to ensure that everything fits. Now at this point, I still need a way to attach the walnut panels to the frame. So for this, I decided to tack in some cleats that I will later use as a glue surface for the panels. But since I am painting the frame, I will need to tape off the glue surfaces so the panels will adhere properly when it comes time to install them. Then it's time for paint. I had some latex house paint left over from my tool chest build, so I decided to get that used up. And since no one wants to watch paint dry, I'll skip ahead and get started on the drawer. For the drawer, I am using a half inch plywood offcut from a previous project. I first measure out my cuts, trim it down on the miter saw, rip the drawer height on the table saw, then using the crosscut sled again, I add some rabbits in each of the faces. And then I cut a slot for the drawer bottom.
Now for the drawer bottom, I had a section of a quarter inch ply offcut that was already pretty close to the correct size, but I did need to trim it up just a little bit. And with everything sized correctly, I can then glue it into place and tack it with a few pin nails. Moving on to the drawer slides. And you'll notice that I'm not using store-bought hardware. I didn't feel that metal hardware would be appropriate for this build, so I decided to make my own. Now I had already cut the slide rails off camera, so here I am using a caliper to measure the rails and marking out the lines for the rabbits. I then remove the bulk of the material on the table saw. And then clean up the slots with a sharp chisel. With the rabbits cut, I can then install the rails. For this, I use popsicle sticks to position the drawer in the frame. I marked out the position using a spacer that is the same thickness as the drawer face. Then flipped it around and marked out the excess rail that I needed to trim down to final size. Off camera, I drilled and countersank the screw holes on the rails. Then it's just a matter of fastening the rails into place. Now I can install the drawer face and I am going with the foolproof method of using playing cards as shims until everything fits. And once there's a nice snug fit, I use the tried and true method of hot glue drawer face. Might not be perfect, but good enough for me to sleep next to. And next, I'll be working on the top. A couple years ago, my dad and I had a walnut tree milled up into slabs. I do have a separate video showing that, and if you want to check it out, I will link it in the description. Anyway, this is one of the edge pieces from that particular tree. My game plan here is to take a smaller slab out of this piece and then book match it to make the top. Since a few of these steps have already been covered in this video, I'm going to sort of gloss over some of this process. But essentially, I cut off the section of the slab that I wanted to use. I did a rough trim on the bandsaw. Then I planed it down just enough for clearance on the router sled. Then flattened one side. Ran it through the planer again to make the faces parallel. Squared up an edge on the jointer. Trim the slab closer to final dimensions. Then for the book match, I did a partial resaw on the table saw. And then completed the cut with the hand saw.
and one more time through the planer to remove the saw marks. Now it's just a matter of lining up the grain, gluing the halves together, and waiting for the glue to dry. Before applying the finish, I wanted to attach the top just to make sure that everything is positioned correctly. Using a face frame biscuit joiner, I cut the slots on the top of the frame for the Z-clips. Then with the top lined up on the frame, I marked out the positions with a center punch and then drilled some pilot holes. After some additional prep work off camera, I am ready to finish the top. The top, as well as the other walnut pieces, will be getting several coats of the clear satin polyurethane. At this point, I decided to paint the drawer. This is the same white paint that I used on the frame. And once the paint has dried, I add my maker's mark. Next, I install the drawer pole. This is a reclaimed cabinet knob that I scavenged from my parents' bathroom renovation. And finally, I can start gluing in the side panels. I get started with the lower rear panel. Nothing too fancy here, just regular wood glue spread out evenly. However, I am being very careful to reduce as much squeeze out as possible. Then I carefully drop in the panel and then put down a microfiber cloth and a paper towel as a cushion. Then I set down a box of nails as clamping pressure. And then I'll repeat that process for each of the remaining six panels. Once all the panels are glued in, I can then reinstall the top. And the last thing to do is wax up the drawer slides. Well, that about does it. This one was a fun one, and personally I think it is one of the better projects that I have done. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching!